Paul wrote about that day. Paul said, the first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. And just as we have borne his image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and we will be, and, and, and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. And Paul went on to teach the Thessalonians that when the trumpet sounds, it will not just be our resurrection, but it will mark the return of Jesus. First Thessalonians, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command and the voice of an archangel and the sound of the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first and then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will always be with the Lord. My friends, there is a day coming. It is a great day. But Jesus is not just returning for us but for the whole of creation. Jesus' passion, Jesus' passion is, is his church. It is his people. But the church is an instrument. It is a means to build the kingdom. It is not the kingdom itself. Because the whole of creation groans under the weight of humanity's sin, the whole of creation stands in need of redemption. When God placed humanity in in, in, in the garden, he gave us authority. He gave us dominion over the earth. Not to dominate, not to desecrate, not to deprecate. Instead, God said, work the land, keep it, improve upon what I have created. When God made creation, he called it very good. He didn't call it perfect. You see, creation is not a monument. It is a tool to worship the creator. It is not created to be worshiped. And when Adam and Eve sinned, they cursed themselves and they cursed the land. They brought death into a world that only knew life. And they separated themselves from each other and from God. And the land brought forth thistles and thorns. When God sent Israel into the promised land, he said, if they were obedient, the land would be made fruitful and prosperous. If they were disobedient, God covenanted that the land would be made barren and pestilent. In Isaiah, it promises that the coming again of Jesus Christ will not only restore humanity, but it will restore the creation God charged us to keep. Isaiah 65, for behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his days. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Jesus is the firstborn of all creation, by whom all things were made, whether in heaven and on earth, whether visible or invisible. He is the Word of God, born into that creation, so that all creation might be made right, so that all things, whether invisible or visible, whether in heaven or on earth, His whole creation might be restored and renewed and redeemed and set at peace with God. Now, if you missed the last 11 weeks, the story is simple. I'm telling you now, rather than at the beginning, to get you to go, come to the whole thing. We'll just save you three months by telling you the whole story now. God made the heavens and the earth. He made men and women in his image to rule it with him. We tried to become like God, and we broke his creation, and we broke our relationship with him and the Father. God pursued his sons and daughters through the family of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David. In the fullness of time, the word became flesh, and he himself descended from heaven to dwell among us. His name is 
Jesus. We sin by wanting to become like God. God, is, God set us free from sin by becoming like us. Jesus, who is the judge of this guilty world, was judged guilty by the world. But death could not contain him. Jesus broke the bonds of death and as a living flesh and blood human being ascended on our behalf into heaven where he sits on the throne of the cosmos as king. Jesus sends his people, called the church, into the four corners of the world to proclaim the gospel and make disciples. And he sends the Holy Spirit to fill his people, to empower them and do even greater works than he. And now, and now we wait for him to return in power and glory and make all things new, including you and me and everything we see and reunite us with God for all eternity. There is a day coming. There is a day coming, and it is a great day. What will that day look like? God gave a picture to John. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with man. He will dwell with them. And they will be his people, and God himself will be their God, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Behold, I am making all things new. All things. When Jesus comes again, what our sin made wrong, he will finally set right. The world will be restored. We will be made new. Death will be dispatched. Pain will be put away. Every tear will be wiped away. And we will have the very desire of our heart, which is to be with God. But that isn't all the Lord revealed to John. You see, John also saw streets of gold and walls encrusted with every kind of jewel. And in the middle of the city was, was, was a temple of God. And there was no need for any light for the glory of the Lord will lit up his restored creation, and the kings of the earth will come and bend their knee at his throne. And from that throne, where reigns God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son, will flow the river of the water of life through the middle of the city and out into the restored creation. And by that river will stand something humanity has not known since the Garden of Eden, since the former paradise. The tree of life, yielding its fruit, free, free to be taken at will. My friends, there is a day coming, a great day. Where will you be on that day? For the last... Uh, four months we have been telling the greatest story the world has ever known or will ever know and one of the things that makes it so great is that this story can be our story our rejection of God our redemption by God a resurrection like God to be restored to a rightful place with God. The story of God's word ends with these words spoken by the word who became flesh. Surely I am coming soon. And then this cry of John's heart, amen. Come Lord Jesus. My friends, there is a day coming, a great day. It can be your story if this is the cry of your heart too. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Today, 
This day, this hour, right now, can be another great day if this is the cry of your heart. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Your story can change forever if this is the cry of your heart. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Your life, your future can change forever if this is the cry of your heart. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The land, the space around you, you can change forever if this is the cry of your heart. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. You can know the desire of your heart, which is to be with the God who made you forever. If this is the cry of your heart, come, Lord Jesus. Amen.